Our Heavenly Father, Spirit, to guide my words at this time. In this call to be a teacher through our prophet, I yearn only for the Lord to be the teacher. Remembering only He can give the increase. And young people, whenever an appointed teacher stands before you to speak, say your prayer. Heavenly Father, I do believe your words. Help me understand. And ask the Lord to guide that teacher right. That opens up your mind and heart to receive the increase through the Spirit of God. I begin today with my testimony. As I know by the Spirit of God that Heavenly Father lives that he is a prayer away through the power of his spirit being everywhere present nothing is hidden from him he dwells on an earth covered with fire and the Holy Ghost and his earth is a great Urim and Thummim where the people there look into the earth and can see us that Holy Spirit communicating to them what we are doing. He has placed around us guardian angels, heavenly beings who can watch us, protect us. And those heavenly angels will only be around us as we obey and attract their gifts and blessings. I bear testimony that God himself came to the earth and suffered more than man could suffer. This great creator of worlds, he came down and showed his love by his sacrifice. Now it's our turn. And as he has loved us, so we should love one another. And we will prove ourselves worthy to dwell with him if we do like him, do as he did. Many people want to be the greatest of all. But he said, the greatest of all is the servant of all. Don't worry to be worried about being great. Just go be good. The greatness of the privilege to live with Heavenly Father will be given to the good, not those who are proud and seeking to be great. I'm impressed with the great opportunity before you young people. I know you don't see it all. That is your test of faith. But you are alive and you can feel you can feel when the truth is spoken to you. If you will be prayerful and open up your mind and heart. That is the spirit I want to speak today. Truth. So that you can feel it. And the truth of what is ahead of you is so great. So far reaching. It is reachable by you obeying your parents saying a prayer when they ask you to do a job so that you can say, yes, mother, I'll do it. Instead of the griping and complaining and why do I have to? The Spirit of God is a feeling of being anxious to do what you're asked and then more. You don't have Heavenly Father's Spirit as you should if you barely do what little you're asked. So get up in the morning and report for duty. Don't think you can lay around and be the greatest. Get up and serve. Those are the people the Lord calls great. So get in and get busy. I'm reminded of a story of our Savior.
two of the apostles in Jesus' day had the same mother. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshipping Jesus and desiring a certain thing of him. You know how mothers love their children to succeed. So this mother came up to Jesus. He asked, What wilt thou that I should do? And she said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left in thy kingdom. Let them be right next to you. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is for whom is prepared of my Father, but not mine to give. The one that is next to him is whom the, whom the Father would appoint, not for the people to decide who is next to him. And when the ten, the ten other apostles, heard this, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. Why should they sit next to you and not us? Or in other words, jealousy. But Jesus called them and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came, not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. So he that would be the greatest of all, he is the servant of all. The greatest among us is our prophet, President Jeffs. And he has dedicated his whole life to bless this people. His sacrifice has been accepted. He labors and labors, even to the point of exhaustion. To where the Lord has called upon him to recover and take a rest. But it is as though he gave his life for this people, giving and blessing, enduring our weaknesses and loving us still. That is the pure love of Christ in action. And if he who is the greatest among us gives his all, his very life for us, there is our example. Give your life to build up others. And then you will please God. Don't sit around waiting for blessings and only bless others when it's convenient. Your face should have the countenance of cheerfulness and build others up. We're born into a world of opposites. The good and the evil are here. And being born into this fallen body, we have opposites within us. Born within us. The spirit came from heaven. It is pure. It can know the truth and the right. This body is of the earth. And we came after many generations of time where the forefathers before us partook of the world's ways. And so there are two opposites 
in us. One, this fallen nature is selfish. The other, of the spirit, is a spirit of giving or sacrifice. Love means to sacrifice or give to build up others. Its opposite is selfishness. This fallen body is selfish by nature. And the spirit, being the opposite way, causes a fight within us. Besides our own nature, there are two powers within our reach. Heavenly Father's spirit was put in us. We had enough of it when we were born to learn. Look how fast you learned. You learned a whole language within the first year or so of your life to where you could start talking and understanding. You learned to walk, talk, and do things. You're increasing and growing. On the other hand, there is a power of darkness. And there is actually a devil, a fallen God, and his many followers, people who don't have bodies. They want to be in us and partake of our bodies. They can only do so if the Spirit of God withdraws from us. And the devil always works on that weakness called selfishness. I want what I want when I want it. And if I don't get it, I'll cry, I'll pout, I'll accuse, I'll complain. That's the feeling inspired of the evil powers. And that's the feeling we have to sacrifice by doing the opposite. Go and sacrifice your wrong feelings, your selfishness, by sacrifice, by loving to give. If there's a struggle in you, if the selfishness is dragging you down, just get up and go give. Give to others. Bless others. And you will have Heavenly Father's Spirit in you to remove that selfishness. Your selfishness won't go away all at once. And even after you get rid of it, the evil powers will still be near where you have to keep the fight up. Keep it going. For they will whisper selfishness to you if you stop your prayers. The higher you go, the harder you have to work with yourself through prayer that Heavenly Father's Spirit will be near. There's a certain place you young people want to never go. There's a certain place you want to avoid. Sometimes older people go to this place. Very often young people, when they hit their teenage years, they go to a place called Fool's Hill. A fool is a stupid person. A fool is a person who thinks that they can have happiness in evil. A fool very rarely knows they're a fool until after they've done all the foolish things and wake up and see there is no happiness in wrongdoing. And a fool is that stupid person because they rely on their own ability and strength, their selfishness and pride. They forget Heavenly Father is their strength and that they are here to please Him. This fool's hill is the path 
of just pleasing your own selfishness. It seems easy to go up this hill. It's smooth and easy. You can get on it right away. But all around and coming down are the cliffs where if you fall off, you will die the eternal death, committing sins that could lead you to the second death, the death of your spirit in eternity. The Lord needs a group of young people who stay away from Fool's Hill. Fool's Hill is your selfishness, your will, instead of doing the will of the prophet. Now you can see those over you know more than you. Where did you learn what you know? This from your parents. They learned it from their parents and from the prophets. It would just be smart of you to rely on those who know more than you. But what does a teenage girl or boy do? They hit those years, their body is as tall or taller than their mother. Oh, our parents have their certain ways and we want ours. And we start to thinking in pride, well, we know better than them. I'm sure you can run faster than your parents, most of you. I'm sure some of you boys could pick up your mother. You're so strong now. But your parents have gifts greater than what you have at the present time. They have the gift of knowledge through experience. They have been what you're going through. They've been through it. And that is why you can look to them for guidance and counsel. Your parents agree. We parents know we need to do better still. We feel like little children learning from you or how to teach you and guide you. And we might act in a manner of humility sometimes where we seem to rely heavily on you. But if you young people will honor your father and mothers, you will seek their counsel. Build them up. Use your time to do their will. You stay off Fool's Hill by submitting to your parents and seeking their will. And when a young man comes of age and receives the Melchizedek priesthood through obedience, he does that same thing toward the prophet. Submit to the prophet's will. That will always keep you off of fool's hill. When you think you know better than our prophet or your parents, your foot has stepped onto fool's hill. And you are in danger. You'll notice when a young person gets on that hill, they gripe and complain against their parents. This mother isn't right, or that mother isn't right. Or you're even tempted that your father isn't doing all things just right. I've worked with some young men who've committed the worst sins. And I've asked them, what was your relationship with your father? when you were young every one of them say it wasn't good some fathers made mistakes committed errors by being harsh not loving enough but here's 
how a young person easily gets on fool's hill. They look for the wrongs in their parents. They spend their thoughts and time naming what's wrong with their parents. And they justify their own wrongs by the supposed wrongs of their parents. Well, father does this wrong or that wrong, or mothers do this wrong and that wrong. Right when you say that, you've stepped onto fool's hill. Justifying your rebellion in what you think is wrong with the parents. And that's what I observed in these young men who went off and chased the girls, committed immoral acts. They always justified their wrongs by dwelling on the supposed wrongs of their parents. A young girl who does this to her father when she gets married, she easily does this to her husband. Well, he doesn't do this or that just right. Wasting her thoughts and time. Justifying her rebellion, her withdrawal, her lack of submission by, well, he's not just right, or this isn't just right. And thus, a young lady can go right into marriage and still be on fool's hill. Living for her selfishness. And she doesn't seem to take on herself the spirit of her husband, the spirit of God. Always a little feelings between them. The battle within us is against our selfishness. You fight it through submission. You overcome it through obedience. And you have overcome when you finally take upon you the spirit of your priesthood head. I yearn that these words will be simple enough for you young people. You're starting on fool's hill when you talk this way. Well, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with that? Even grown-ups, you're on fool's hill when you justify yourself with that silly question. The way to stay off it, the right question is, Father in heaven, is this right? I just want to do right. Is this right? Guide me with your spirit, or you say to your father or mother, I just want to do right, show me the way. Then you're staying away or going around Fool's Hill on Wisdom's Path. And you will be led through your young life, through your sacrifice of your will, and doing the will of those over you. That is your sure deliverance. It continues into married life, into the lives of the elders. If a man is humble and submissive, then later on goes in the path of selfishness, he gets on fool's hill. The most wise thing you can ever say and do is, Father in heaven, thy will be done. Guide me, I will obey. You must draw close to the priesthood head over you in order to sacrifice and stay away from selfishness. And stop wanting to be the greatest above others. That is selfishness. Just start to serve and build up others. And you will have that great spirit of peace within. As far as I know, we're on Jacob chapter 1, is that right? 
a few words into these chapters. To absorb Jacob chapter 2, you really need to read chapter 3 with it, which is your tonight's assignment. 3 and 4. Is that right? <laughs> And Jacob, I want you to see why all the meetings, why all the training, young people. The very last verse of chapter 1, he explains why your parents talk to you, the teachers teach you. And we did magnify our office unto the Lord, taking upon us the responsibility answering the sins of the people upon our own heads, if we did not teach them the word of God with all diligence. Wherefore, by laboring with our might, their blood might not come upon our garments. Otherwise, if we didn't step forth and teach you as parents, teachers, otherwise, their blood would come upon our garments and we would not be found spotless at the last day. Your parents realize that if they don't teach you right, your sins will be upon them. But once you are taught, your sins will be upon you if you have any. And thus, your obedience will earn you a reward. And how grateful you should be to have teachers or parents that can teach you and lead you to life and deliver you from evil. Jacob was visited of the Lord during the night time. And the Lord revealed to the prophet that there were sins among the people. The first sin is the one I talked to you today about. Pride, which is selfishness. And the evidence he gave of their pride was they started to set their hearts on the things of this world to where they would fight and quarrel or be dishonest, wanting to get gain. They wanted riches and gold and silver and lands and possessions. When you love anything more than God, you are an idol worshiper. That thing you love more is your idol. And the way you can tell you're an idol worshiper is you lose the spirit of God over it. You're willing to fight or have feelings that drive away Heavenly Father's Spirit. There are outward idols that people have, but the worst idol you could have is to worship yourself or follow your selfishness. That is what the people were doing, and he rebuked them and said, Do the opposite. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, deliver the captive, Bless those in need. That's the only way you can prove you're not proud, is to sacrifice or give and bless others. Give to others. Jacob then said, If this was the only thing I had to correct you on, I would be happy. But my heart is heavy. I am weighed down with the sins of this people. And this is what President Reuben Jeffs has been suffering these many years. He has had to clean up the immorality, these greater crimes from among the people. Jacob went forth, and he rebuked the people for their adulteries, fornication, boys and girls touching each other before they're married. 
And the Lord gave a commandment and said, You shall not have the plurality of wives anymore. And you men shall have only one wife. And what I want to point out to you young people is that having more, more than one wife was not the wickedness. It was what they were doing and how they got those wives and abused them and the evils that they performed. In the priesthood, the highest law we can live in priesthood is celestial and plural marriage. When does the Lord withdraw this great and holy law from the people? It is when they are wicked and immoral. The people of the world read chapter 2 and say, Look, having more than one wife is wicked. And that's not what it says. It's saying, when a people become wicked, they lose the privilege of this high and holy law. In chapter 2, he rebukes them for their immorality. He says, I, the Lord God, delight in the chastity of women. He wants the girls to be untouched, pure and clean, and have their virtue. The opposite, giving up your innocence, is an abomination before me, saith the Lord of hosts. Men were going about dating women, even being with women before they were married, and then claim them as wives. That isn't how it's done. Priesthood marriage is by revelation through the prophet, appointed and approved of him. Until then, a young person should not have relations with others. Private relations. But I want to point out to you in your reading tonight that in chapter 2 the prophet rebukes wickedness. But he continues into chapter 3 and he talks to the pure in heart. And he tells them to continue and keep the commandments of God. Verse 30 of chapter 2 explains that the law of celestial and plural marriage is under the Lord's control, not just by choice of the people. For if I will, saith the Lord of hosts, raise up seed unto me, I will command my people. He will command that this law of plural marriage will be lived. Otherwise, they shall hearken unto these things of having only one wife. Then he talks to the pure in heart in chapter 3, encouraging them to live the law, and the law is available to them. So don't think celestial and plural marriage as the law of the priesthood is evil and corrupt because of these chapters. But know the truth. The Lord withdraws it from a wicked people. So make sure you are pure in heart, morally clean, so you can be worthy of living this high and holy law. For it will be withdrawn from any individual in this day who is unclean. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. The great selfishness of this generation is immorality. Sacrifice those desires through obedience. Love the right. Okay. Now in your classroom, stay off Fool's Hill.
that's one step away of seeking your own will instead of the will of those over you. Obey the teachers at home. Stay off the wool's hill. Obey your parents quickly. And you wives, stay off the wool's hill. Seek the will of your husband with a prayer in your heart. And you elders, stay off the wool's hill by seeking the will of our prophet in all you do. Have a wonderful day today. We'll have our chorus class and then afterwards have high school do a morning class test. If you can leave the test here, you're excused.